Hello my loves and welcome back to Bahati Life YouTube channel, our sacred, beautiful, comfy, cozy place here on the internet. My name is Jessica Alexandria for meeting for the first time. This is Franklin who is very, very um, sassy today. He has decided that he is not settling for less, honey, and if that's the case, then neither should you, boo. <laughs> He's like, he just refuses to receive uh, bare minimum energy, and I think that that is the message. Feel free to click off. <laughs> Feel free to click off and migrate on if you need to. Just before you go, don't forget to give this video a thumbs up or a subscribe. Welcome, you my, my loves. How are you guys feeling? How are you doing? So far, so good here today. It is a potentially rainy, windy day today. Fingers crossed for some pretty good storms here. Um, in the sense that they water the lawn and don't destroy, uh, destroy property, you know. So, because these storms these days are, they're very intense. We have so much to talk about this week, astrologically speaking, of course. That's why you're here. There is a ton of changes that are happening in the cosmic skies. And of course, they're going to be impacting us here down on Earth in our intimate and our personal lives. So go ahead and get cozy, get some water, get some tea. I have a big old Stanley cup, a, a jug for myself. I think this is a Stanley and not a knockoff. I got it from Target. Either way. Pick your poison, choose your beverage of choice, and when you're ready, let's go ahead and dive right in. All right, my loves, so first things first, before I even dive into the astrological breakdown of this week, I wanna actually step my game up a little bit, challenge myself a little bit more, and break this video down into categories so that you can find the timestamp and exactly what that you're looking for. First chunk of this video, this moment that we're sharing together, is going to be the full astrological breakdown. This is gonna include the current astrological transits as well as my interpretation of them, not just from single, but reading the entire chart. Second, I wanna share some really important shop updates, reading updates for those who have already booked and for those who have reserved orders with me. That's gonna be very important. I've noticed that there's um, sometimes questions in the comments about orders and updates. I wish that I could answer all of those, but it's just not good for customer service um, to be able to directly address certain things. And as for m many of you guys know, I'm working on um, the betterment of my business and making sure that I'm able to support everyone and their individual needs. Okay, and the third chunk of this message is going to be an inspirational message, so make sure that you stay tuned for that. All right, my love, so let's go ahead and dive into the week ahead. Let me pull the chart up. Wow, so first things first, we have a few major major transits um, updates that are going to be highly highly impactful in your life and going to initiate really intense beautiful change as far as i can tell as far as i can see first things first on tuesday we have the new moon happening in the sign of sagittarius now for those of you guys that don't know sagittarius is always connected to adventure and exploration and um, travel and getting your mind out, studying, expanding yourself from a wiser perspective. Ideally, a more wise. Did I tell you guys how much he is aggressive right now? I'm just going to have to hold him. Enjoy the Franklin cameo. With the new moon happening in the sign of Sag Sagittarius, the time is going to be 6.32 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. This is already going to open up the door for newness and a new chapter. Looking at the entirety of the chart and everything that's going on lately, I do want to tell you that astrologically and intuitive, uh, the intuitive feeling that it is that I'm getting, there's this feeling of like sacrifice. I also got some intuitive downloads, um, 10, 10, 10, so 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10. This should feel positive. This should feel optimistic. It's if you are more along the lines of being open to exploration, being open to your mind opening, to being open to a new path, a new way, a new chapter. Now, for some of you guys, there's this old dream or vision or something that has already been set into place. It could be a marriage, it could be career, it could be friendships. It's interesting because those older things, those antiquated things, the things that we thought would last forever, 
they don't necessarily have that same promise connected to them. So with this new moon happening in sign Sagittarius, looking at the charts and also looking from my higher self with my intuition, it's almost as if this newness is not a fresh start, a new beginning in the places that we are we have been called to walk away from. As I'm saying that, I'm also getting this, I'm hearing the word entitled. This feels a little harsh as I'm saying it, but the way that the divine is kind of speaking to me right now is sometimes when we want something or we're hoping for something, we expect something to be a certain way, we get a sense of entitlement to that because we asked for it, we prayed for it, we set intention for it, and when it doesn't pan out the way that it is that we want it to, it can make us get um, lose hope, get get off track, feel disappointed, feel defeated, feel frustrated. And Spirit is saying that you're not entitled to that outcome. What we wish to give you is what is for your highest and greatest good. So with this new moon, I really want to tell you guys that as long as you can stay open and be curious and ask more questions instead of assume, the outcome will feel very positive. It'll feel very uplifting. You'll feel very supported versus being set back. Now, as I say that, some of you guys might actually feel this immediate because I'm feeling it. What do you mean? Is this is the shit about to hit the fan? Are things about to get worse? I'm hoping for it to be better. Is that the case, Jess? Do you see that? And I just want to really clearly say that from the way that the astrological charts look like, again, if you are open to a new a new path if you're open to a new way if you're open to not assuming because the charts before this and if you guys have been old followers and friends of the youtube channel like you know because i've been t talking about this a lot of the planets are kind of giving this energy where we have our backs pushed against the wall where how we were operating or how the relationship was unfolding or what we were choosing wouldn't have worked out so the universe and the planets almost have us so that we're backed into a corner and there's no other way other than to exit or to go a different path so let me know down in the comments if that's something that you can resonate with just say just that resonates that rings bell that that rings true to me if not if it hasn't felt like a back against the wall type of moment for others of you guys it's literally like you're soaring you can't you're untouchable you're like Icarus flying very, very close to the sun, but you haven't fallen and hopefully, fingers crossed, you don't. You are coasting, you're rising up, things are feeling good, things are feeling positive, and you're, you, you just, there's a sense of freedom, there's a sense of expansion. So it just depends on what's going on in your personal chart and, the, and how that's gonna show how these um, transits are gonna be imp impacting you and influencing you. There is a lot of reason to be hopeful. There's a lot of, things to be excited excited about. For many of us, it's going to be a new chapter. It's going to be a breakthrough when it comes to communication, when it comes to purpose and path, and when it comes to freedom, believe it or not, in your closest, more intimate relations, your relationships. Do keep in mind that leading up into this new moon, we have plenty of retrograde planets. We have Chiron retrograde, we have Jupiter retrograde, Uranus retrograde, Neptune's about to be retrograde, um, and also Pluto's in the final degrees of Capricorn. So this has been the breakdown of the things that we made promises to that we think we're going to last forever. With this breakdown, it has it it makes it so that you are encouraged, enticed to explore a new path. I'm really interested in hearing your rising sign and where you see this new chapter, this new growth, like this new area that you want to explore. Um, let me know down in the comments. For example, let's say you're a Cancer rising and you're feeling like a new chapter opening up in your career, in your work, in your path, and your purpose, or a, a pivot, like a deviation from how you would normally do things. Definitely when it comes to lessons that you have you have learned, because all these pieces of the puzzle, they're, they're super connected. A lot of it has to do with karma, not to say that you're doing anything wrong, but the trials and tribulations when you're learning through these challenges. And some of those challenges can be very backbreaking where you're just like, this is how I've always done it. Can I can I continue on in the same way? Is this something that is substantial? Can it can it make a promise for the long haul? If not, again, that Saturn and that Pluto, those Pluto transits are working to break down so that this 
normal is new it's fresh it's promising and that is everything to have hope for this is actually where i kind of want to share with you some of the intuitive messages that i was channeling before i even started diving into the astrology chart well as i was diving into it the word that came through was sacrifice sacrifice and again the numbers that were joining up after that were one zero one zero one zero which is significant all by itself um please guys feel free to leave your revelations when it comes to that number sequence down below in the comments to help me to help each other to help yourself and to put a pin in this because that that number sequence right there is very very powerful and when it came to the word sacrifice i really cautiously was having a conversation with with the guides and I'm just like when you say sacrifice what exactly are you saying like what does this mean and when I heard the word sacrifice the confirmation that I got with that is it's not so much what you oh yeah it's not so much what you lose but what you do now and the actual sacrifice is going to be your comfort your comfort zone your safe place now it's so interesting because with the word sacrifice sometimes we think that this is going to be something that is painful for us that it's going to be where something is going to be taken away but the guides are clearly saying that the sacrifice is going to be actually in your actions what you do now something that's going to really lift you up is remembering that everything that's happening here is for your highest and greatest good that's number one but if something is being taken away meaning like the actions that is that you're doing it's going to be better. It's going to be pouring into you in another place. So with this um, transition, when it comes to what you do, you're going to be sacrificing your comfort a little bit, but it feels more about your self-worth and your self-value and how you've learned to show up, how you've learned to give, how you learn to overgive, what you allow yourself to receive, what you reject, what you're not receiving. And to confirm this even further, I started getting visions of oranges and mangoes and that connected immediately for me personally to uh, solar plexus energy that's the time when i start working with um I, I really am big on believing that food is nourishing of the body of course and how that when your physical body is right your spiritual body is right and your mental body becomes right and your emotional body becomes right sometimes when we <clears throat> which is very interesting when we lean too aggressively into over giving or under receiving sometimes it, it connects us into our self-worth do we feel like we're worth it do we feel like in order to have friendship com connections community to be worthy to be valued to be valued do we have to keep keep giving 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 in the same way which is funny because franklin's got his little orange thing on now that i'm thinking did i in the beginning of the video i told you guys he's very um he's not settling for less when it comes to cuddles and huggies he wants to be poured into today and i am not mad at that <laughs> <laughs> and I, if you see this, like I'm trying to focus and he's, you'll see this tiny little paw of like, boop, <laughs> like anyway. <laughs> so that's been um, Franklin's vibe today and I'm not mad at it at all. Like I said, on the 13th, Mercury is going to be moving uh, retrograde in the sign of Capricorn. I mean, of course, divine timing, but it's just so wild how everything connects. Mercury moving retrograde mercury turning retrograde in the sign of capricorn and pluto in the final degrees of capricorn i mean you can't make this you can't make this up like this is again about the breakdown of what we thought was going to be forever this could be again relationships it could be marriage it could be the career it could be how we choose to show up where we're being called to go what how we're being called to communicate how we're called to heal ourselves again what does mercury rule within your chart number one and so what what does uh virgo what house does virgo rule within your chart and gemini what does that rule within your chart everybody has it ruling something and mercury where does it fall within your needle chart and where is mercury currently transiting that's going to give you the greater picture of how you're most likely going to feel this if you are not someone who understands astrology i feel you on that do not force um to do not force the answers ask yourself where your mind has been drifting off to the most when you're talking with your best friends when you're talking to me 
where do you, what is the conversation that you want to start talking about the first, like the most? Not the, hey girl, how are you? Like not superficial, but when you, when we're sitting down and we're getting to the meat of things, where does your mind first go that you want to talk about? Go ahead and allow yourself to be intuitively led through the realms of astrology and not logically led through the realms of astrology. That's a blessing too. And I teach that within the Sacred Circle Tarot School um, about, you know, learning to go with those ebbs and the flows of the emotions and the feelings. I'll keep the links down for that shameless self plug for Sacred Circle Tarot down in the description box. Um, but moving on, it's interesting because Mercury retrograde in the sign of Capricorn and Pluto in the final degrees of Capricorn is having you kind of reassess uh, the plan, reassess communication, reevaluate, or maybe even re rekindle, reconnect, reconsider what has already been broken down. This is one of the major blessings of Mercury retrograde is that it helps you to kind of revisit and reconcile if needed, repair if needed, so that for the after the three weeks has passed, everything that was broken down, everything that wasn't working can now have a chance at a second life if it deserves it if it's worth it and when this planet re like brings things back into your energy and brings back into your perspective this is not a sign from the universe that you have to say yes to it it's a sign that it had value and that's okay to just leave it at that okay it had value whether to someone else whether to an idea there's some type of value there you do not have to explore that or rip or put energy into that to repair it for some of you guys this is not again so much active it could be a sense of dormancy where you might find yourself retreating into a cave or retreating into your own world and um disconnecting for a little bit and i can relate to that as well i definitely have been feeling that lately for others of you this could actually be the activation of travel you may find yourself needing to wanting to travel to go back to school to do a career change to change your um, studies in your in your schooling everyone is going to be different for some of you guys you it could be something very simple or beautiful as remembering an old book that is that you wanted to read and picking it back up and really take dedicating that time i don't know if you guys are picking up the vibe that is i'm putting down either way the energy feels very supportive it feels very good it feels very nice it's not really like what it is that you're expecting like it's not any maybe not anything to write home about as they say but it's for your betterment it feels good and that's okay and the last thing that is that i want to say here is that these astrological transits, especially I don't know why with the 101010 and sacrifice, there's this message about slowing time down. And I don't know if you guys have understood this yet in your own journey, but sometimes life feels like it's speeding up because we ourselves are moving, spinning like these spinning tops. We look up and we're like, damn, time flew by. There's nothing wrong with using this time to slow time down for yourself by not filling all of the space of your time up with all these different activities or information or stimulation, but allowing yourself to let time drag slowly by and enjoying it and savoring it, whether that be for increasing the amount of time that you go on your walks through the woods or walks on the beach, whether it be putting your phone off for not just a few hours, but for days, whether that be not journaling and just being, you know, instead of capturing your feelings, even though you might be someone who is huge on capturing your feelings, you might want to um, leave the feeling, like just feel the feelings and not necessarily capture them when you're normally someone who journals. Do you guys see the aggressiveness <laughs> of Franklin right now? I'm not kidding when I tell you. He's very like, today's me time. He's a Leo, by the way. Everybody in this household, well, the dogs are all Leos. So that's very really significant. They just really need a lot of attention and time. Then you have the Aquarius and the Virgo who cohabitate, me and my boyfriend, together. This household is <laughs> just <laughs> wild. Can you imagine the vibration? Like, the energy in here is just such a, such a mood. <laughs> to go even further with... Uh, these transits, I want to bring to your attention the fact that on 15th of Friday, 
Speaking of Aquarius, the moon's going to be entering into the sign of Aquarius, but it's also going to be void of, void of course on Friday. Um, on top of that, Mercury is going to be trying Chiron retrograde. And for those of you guys that don't know, I've been saying this a lot, and if you're old friends to the YouTube channel, to me, you already know how much Chiron has been showing up, like showcasing its face lately. Um, and for those of you guys that are brand new, feel free to subscribe so that you can stay up to date with all of these really important um, astrological influences and give you a little bit more understanding from a deeper perspective of why life is the way that it is, why things are happening, and what to expect. Chiron retrograde lately has been bringing up a lot of um, self-worth, self-value, and like I said, what we do, how we do it. And the what we do, whether it's hurting us or adding healing to us, whether it's supportive of us and, or whether it's challenging us, this is going to be the day, even though I know that the overarching message is all about like what's to come, what we do now, where we're called to go. I want to tell you, <clears throat> and this is the next transit, but a lot of this is going to be an opportunity for you to have your actions be divinely inspired and this could look like for many of us um kind of assessing and re again looking back why do i feel like i have to do this i might be doing this i might have always done it this way but why who told me this what was the belief have i grown away from that belief has that something has that been something that i have evolved away from i don't necessarily need to continue and carry on in the same way that I've always, I've always been, I've, it's the way that it's always been. I can choose to do different. Now this could rec, uh, show up in again our relationships where you may look at your partnership or a friendship and say, listen, I know that we always do this. I know that when you call, I answer. But again, Mercury retrograde, Chiron retrograde, new moon in Sagittarius, and this intuitive message of sacrifice, it's more about, listen, these were my old comfort zones and this is what we've accepted, this is what worked, but now is my time to kind of reassess, does this continue to work in the same way? And what happens if there's a change of plans? Does our relationship change? Does my peace of mind change? And instead of judging and making assumptions of, oh, this is going to be the end of everything or this is going to be the end of an era or this is going to be you know the start of something just approach it with all right let's see where this goes let's see where this goes let's see where this happens and set the intention for the highest and greatest because again this new moon in Sagittarius does have a blessing of optimism and positivity and even though the adventure might be a little intimidating as far as what comes next it's not there to hurt you it's there to show you a new way that may be better than you could have ever imagined interesting because um i am feeling this also since i had to pause for a second it was like literally half a second um because i am very excited <laughs> i don't know if you guys are feeling that too probably franklin and i are matching energies meanwhile nova's sleeping i'm just really excited to talk about astrology and spend this time with you i always say this but i'm very grateful Anyway, um, oh, nakedness. I just now when I took that half pause, I got this energy of like nakedness, of like stripping down, of simplifying and um, coming back to the root, coming back to, I don't know why I'm getting a vision of like someone like making bread. So everything kind of like being done from scratch and going back to that. I know that I always used to do this, but now it feels like a chore is kind of the energy that it is I'm picking up by someone making bread where the sense of like, what if I, yeah, like with my food, this is an example, by the way, normally I would go to the grocery store, but what if I didn't go to the grocery store? What if I enjoyed the process and putting my phone away and the time that it takes to make bread, to bake bread, and then enjoy the bread that I made? There's something, even though it's not the shortest, easiest, most convenient, fastest way, the, the value and I don't know if you guys, I love the fact that Spirit's actually using that as an example because that is actually kind of summing up the energy of this week, that it's not necessarily what is the most fast, convenient, efficient, but set, stepping away in order to enjoy, to slow time down, to really, to do something different and to explore something different. And what does this mean for you? Maybe try not to define it other than just enjoy it, simply enjoy it as much as you can. 
Last transit that I want to talk to you guys about before we move on to the sec second chapter of um, this our time together is Sun Square Neptune is on Saturday directly, but we're going to be feeling this pretty aggressively all this week. For It's going to be like this shadow, like this cloud, um, a pink or purple cloud. So it's not like a negative cloud. The reason why the Sun Square Saturn is going to be so, I'm sorry, Saturn, Sun Square Neptune, just to clarify, it's going to be interesting because this is one of my dissociative um, transits. Meaning like it's when our energies start to feel like I want to separate from the reality and I want to go to a space where I can disconnect from that reality and just kind of drift around in the ethers. This is not the week and this is also not the month of making concrete plans for the future. This is very much a season now as we enter into the new year of newness exploration curiosity visualization conceptualization asking questions connecting with our intuitive and our energetic bodies and allowing that to just be this is not a time that the conversations that is that you have you can consider them but don't cement them okay if you try to cement your plans if you try to force an outcome or or figure things out you know and just whatever you figure out during this time is going to be it is what it is it's going to be what it is it's going to be that you will find yourself disappointment disappointed frustrated and you wouldn't be utilizing this time constructively wisely or moving in alignment again with the energies this is a time to ask more questions to consider to maybe look into all these different perspectives to try things out and not necessarily lock them in so this, this transit will also bring in the energy of like daydreaming. It will, it will brighten your mind with new ideas of how life could be, of what feels right for you. And at the end of this transit, or at least at the end, starting into the new year, actually, even though this transit is this the 16th on Saturday, this is also a combination of all these different other energies, the new moon and Sagittarius, Mercury retrograde, things to consider, things to consider. For some of you guys too, there's this energy too of like avoidance. That is okay. I know that as people who we try, try to be of our word, we try to be healthy, we try to move forward. Even bringing up the word avoidance feels like shameful in today's times. Sometimes it's needed. Um, sometimes you just need to take a break from life, from what you're seeing, from what you're hearing, from what you're thinking. I understand that. This is always going to be a safe place. I'm not a judgmental person. And I hope that that energy is something that is attracting other people who are like-minded and not here to judge or be harshly punishing of people when they're going through difficult times, when they don't have it all figured out, that they are trying to figure it out. If you're trying, I think that that's all that matters. If you are honest in your trying and honest in your showing up, that is, at the end of the day, all we can ask of each other. I say this to my clients. I say this to my friends. I say this to my family. The season that we're in, astrologically speaking, it's the energies are harsh enough. So to be someone who is allowing there to be grace and things to kind of fall apart because they are inevitably going to, it's that's a huge blessing that's a huge blessing so i could go off on that a little further but uh, i will leave it i will leave it there for now all right i think we're ready for the second portion of our oh yeah we are definitely ready for the second portion that is to talk about shop updates <laughs> speaking of grace yeah shop updates and reading updates so uh, first things first the shop update Yo, know, the recent one, we had over a thousand orders, like over a thousand after being shut down for a minute. That is a lot for one person to handle. Um, huge blessing. It does take time. So I just want to give you guys a, a real quick update and shout out for those that have um, have really been patient and those who placed orders. The fact that I'm still going this strong is a representation, not of perfection, but authenticity. That's something too that I don't expect of myself is to just show up um, 110% in all the different many ways. I do show up often, often, authentically. And for those of you guys that see that and know that and know that the quality will always be there and I give 110% to the places that I'm able to show up to is um, 
a huge blessing and it does take time. I am one person and I do focus on quality in my magic and my intention and my readings. Um, and that can be a lot, but again, it does take time. So big, big, th big thank you, big shout out, big hug, major gratitude for those that understand, especially in a world where it's very Amazon. So having said that, I am actively working on finding new ways to use my time um, wisely, more efficiently, while also allocating time for me to just be a human being, to go for walks, to spend time with my family and my friends. And again, I can't say this enough, but big gratitude for those of you guys that have been really patient for me. For longer orders, there was a little bit delay with um, herb quality because you guys know I literally get the highest quality of herbs that are known that you could find. And it's not just a small amount of herbs. I have a very special vendor. They work in respect to what is happening to our planet. And as you guys know, the planet is going through it. She's going through it. So we do not extract from those places if it is barren, we don't. And that can create a little bit extra time. I am not someone who tries to over profit who tries to over consume if there is a wait sometimes that does happen and most of my products in my shop are sustainable they are not punishing to our earth they are not compromising in quality and those that is always something from start to finish that is always what you can expect i think i want to say this to kind of explain any type of delays um, if I haven't, especially if it's not clearly being received or if you're not, if you're not knowing, you know, the effort and why I do what I do and the way that I do it, it can be really tough to be like, well, what the heck? At the same time, I totally understand that. And I appreciate you guys. And if you have a what the heck moment for, for you to reach out, we do have a new person by we, I mean, me, myself and I, I do have a new um, assistant. Her name is Amina. She is brand new. She is amazing. She's also learning and sometimes she can get overwhelmed. Please send her love and support in the realms of energetically. I'm really big on protecting anybody that is I work with, anybody who's in my intimate life, even my community. You know, I'm very big on protecting and prioritizing feelings, emotions, energy, and making sure that they are supported. It can be a little overwhelming. <laughs> even if your heart and your mind and your intention is in the right place to do a good job, even small things can be a lot. So I'm giving her, and I ask that you give her a lot of grace too when it comes to um, adjusting to this season. Ideally, I always like to hire someone for long term. I'm a girl who's like commitment, relationship focused. If I invite you in, I, I am already assuming that we're going to be here for life. I'm not trying to put that pressure on her, but I want to keep her forever. So I want to um, ask you guys to, you know, I know that she's there for customer service and support to give her a little bit of grace and compassion as she is also brand new, excited to be here, but can also oftentimes be overwhelmed. And I'm sure a lot of you guys can relate to that. At the same time, saying all of that, customer service at the end of the day is my... I want to give, if I could text every single one of you and just tell you my day and tell you how much you mean to me and how much I'm grateful, I would, but it's just, there's literally a lot, there's a lot of people and I connect with every single one of you. That's why I'm here on YouTube is to be able to continue to show up through thick and through thin. So just know that I very much prioritize, um, prioritize you and love being of service, love showing up. <clears throat> Same thing in readings right now. I'm actually going to be sending an email out to those who have reserved readings. There was, um, around Thanksgiving, there was a little pivot in the schedule. Most of you guys received <clears throat> email clar clarification, but I believe that there are some who fell through the, through the loops. I'm going to be, I don't like to say circling back because I can't stand corporate America energy. I'm going to be like a helicopter coming right on back and just making sure doing my checks during Mercury retrograde, inspired by Mercury retrograde, which means I'm going to be starting right after this video. Even though Mercury retrograde is happening on Wednesday, this is always Mercury retrograde is always my time that I set aside as a business to revisit, recircle, kind of reconnect who did I miss, what is missing, which is inevitable with um, starting in a business. Having said that, Sacred Circle Tarot School. 
is in full bloom. We have a live on Tuesday. I can't wait <laughs> to talk to you guys. With the lesson, yes. Um, with Sacred Circle Tarot School, we're going to be opening up um, business, tarot business, running a tarot business, running a spirituality business, the ins and the outs of that, how difficult it is to kind of maintain the best of those worlds, the highs, the lows, the things that work out, the things that don't work out. Uh, we're going to be diving into all of those things. That's what you can expect. This is for students who are currently enrolled, and this is for those who are potentially excited about um you know, enrolling. So that's something to look out for too with the Sacred Circle Tarot School. It is a huge conversation. We live in a time right now where there are more people who are actively practicing and demonstrating the fact that they love astrology, that they love tarot. That was never, that was not like that. When I was in my early 20s, there was a lot of stigma when it came to tarot, astrology, spirituality, mysticism, esoteric symbolism, all those things. I just want to say that because we we think that this is normal and it is normal, but this is new normal and this is in our lifetime. And so with that, I think it's amazing that a lot of tarot businesses are opening up. A lot of astrologers are practicing it. Navigating through those highs and those lows, especially as you grow and you expand and you're worldwide international like myself, that is a tricky territory. And that's something that is hasn't been done before. So I'm going to be breaking down all of what it is that you can expect um, with that and opening up the door for plenty of questions. I did get the, the question of, do you, Jess, do you have a one-on-one -on -one mentorship? Not right now. I'm hoping to provide all the information that is that you need within Sacred Circle Tarot School to kind of close, to fulfill all of those questions. Um, if I was a smart business person, I think I would open up for coaching. But right now, my focus, my priority is, again, to maintain quality, to not overextend myself, and to give all of myself into the apothecary, into the school, and into those who booked readings. I'm also not booking readings into the new year as far as right now. It probably, If I was, it probably wouldn't be until September, November, October of 2024, just because your girl needs um a break <laughs> a beautiful break not that i don't want to talk i do want to talk but i think i just want to go back to my youtube realms you know where i was just and maybe even considering going back live because i really going live for sacred circle tarot school really sparked that feeling of like wow i freaking love connecting with you i love connecting with the community love it all right inspirational mess oh if you guys have any questions about any updates as far as sacred circle reading updates shop updates do not hesitate to email me at info at bahati life or go ahead and utilize that uh, text message support um, i'll link that number down below that's the best way there is a little bit of delay again because there's a learning curve that's happening right now i know as a customer or someone who's waiting that can be very very frustrating i get it i totally understand just know that we're doing the best that we can as a small small team, mostly by we. Yes, Amina, yes, my family who supports me in wrapping and packing orders who handle stress way better than I ever could. But me, I'm always thinking about new ways to show up to maximize, again, my time, my energy without ever compromising quality. And I just, that's just a moral thing. You know, that's just a, that's just a just thing you know so okay let's go ahead and move on to our third chapter of this time that is that we're spending together and it's this message that i wrote down which interestingly enough is inspired by my sweater and let me show you up close there's a reason why i'm wearing this because the message actually is right in alignment for the message that is that i'm feeling for this week it's a whole paragraph it says remember to love oh write this down <laughs> write this down or put it on a post-it note write it down put it on a post-it note or an index card post it on your stories tag me make it your wallpaper on your phone it'll give you life this week i promise okay you ready remember to love one another one another remember to love one another always stay in touch with nature be kind to yourself buy or pick or plant lots of flowers beautify your surroundings put a pin in that one 
Keep learning and stay curious. Try new recipes, pet and love on as much dogs and cats as possible. Travel, explore, and enjoy your life. Become your best self and have fun. That, I think, is the mantra for our life right now. As long as you are doing those things, as long as you are trying, you are doing very, very well. Now, I know, again, that we live in a society where the standards are always very, very high of what it is that we should be doing and what the expectations that is that we have for ourselves. I totally get it. But as long as those are your main bread and butter things, you are living in your purpose, you're moving in alignment, and the divine is always, of course, going to look out for you. Now, when I said beautify your surroundings, I said put a pin in it. This is to encourage you to be aware of how you make this world a better place. And the more that you're able to pour into yourself by doing those things and slowing down, the more that you will be able to show up for this world in a way that is positive, that is of light, in a world that right now could use a whole lot more love and light. And I know that that's something that we say, but sometimes we get frustrated, not just with others, but with ourselves, especially when we have this in conversation in our heads, I should be doing this, why can't I do this? This 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 conversation ends up destructing our soul. It ends up breaking down at our soul. And the divine watches us, our angels and our guides watch us as we have those conversations with ourselves, as we talk to ourselves in that way. And we get frustrated and it gets it starts to sadden when it looks at us beating ourselves down. So when it says beautify your surroundings and try to make this world a better place, a lot of that is about being so kind to yourself and um, utilizing your time in a way that is constructive without putting more pressure on yourself. That is completely understandable because, again, society is kind of putting pressure, but more but we don't have to. We don't have to accept that. We don't have to take that and say, okay, if this is what they're saying, if this is what expected, then I had to show up. As long as you're doing those bread and butter things, you're going to be, you're doing just fine. And that is exactly what's being asked of you. Okay, so be kind to yourself. Be, be aware of that inner voice and all will be well and right <laughs> with your world and then in turn, our world. So thank you guys so much for being here. Thank you so much for vibing for the list of supplements and vitamins that it is that I'm taking that are also in my water right now. I'll leave it down in the link below. Until then, please give this video a thumbs up to contribute back to the YouTube channel. Feel free to subscribe for those of you guys that aren't already, and I'll see you guys in my next one. Bye.